It is my pleasure to introduce the next fireside chat, which will be led by uh, Lochan, and she will be in conversation with um, Shalini. Let me quickly introduce Lochan. Lochan is uh, executive director at Falcon X, an accelerator for B2B startup that nurtures innovation through mentorship, investment, and customer connections. At Falcon X, she is also spearheading strategic partnership with accelerators globally, helping global startups to establish footprints in Silicon Valley. Lochan is also <clears throat> board member of IIT Bay Area Alumni Association and vice president of IIT Roorkee Alumni Association. It's a pleasure to have you here, Lochan. Please take over the conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction, Nidhi. Hello, everyone. This is Locha Nalak, and as Nidhi has also, uh, already introduced me, I'm the executive director of Falcon X, which is an accelerator for B2B startups, and I'm also the board member of IIT Bay Area Alumni Association. Although we could not meet in person, but thanks to media and technology, we all are here at the virtual IIT Bay Area Leadership Conference 2021, and we have a very special guest with us today, Shalni Govil Pai, who is the VP and GM of TV at Google, a thought leader, a seasoned executive, uh, and uh, author of two internationally recognized books and a mother of two very smart kids. A very warm welcome to you, Shalni. It's a pleasure to have you today with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lochan. And thank you for inviting me for this fireside chat. I'm very excited to be here. Very nice. Shalni, so we are here at IIT Barrier Leadership Conference. So why don't we start with our alma mater? What inspired you to join IIT and what was it like to be there? Uh, would you like to share some personal anecdotes, achievements, struggles? Uh, yeah, sure. I have so many of them. Um, you know, when I was growing up, I, I grew up in Bombay uh, and I went to IIT Bombay. Um, I was very much like in, enthralled by Bollywood. And uh, one of the stories I like to tell is, which is a true story, by the way, is that I really wanted to be part of Bollywood in some way. And when I was about 12, I got this offer to be part, you know, a child actress in this movie called Hum Bache Hindustan Ke. And I was like, okay, here's my chance and I'm gonna be part of Bollywood and I'm gonna really shake it up there. And lo and behold, you know, we launched that movie and I guess it was really bad because no one saw it. Even my parents didn't see it. And many, many years later, when I was at YouTube, I had asked my YouTube team in India to digitize it and put it up on YouTube. I'm like, okay, kuch to karo, like, at least let's get this movie up on YouTube. And they weren't able to find it because no one had bothered to digitize it. It was sitting in some vault, probably still is, rotting away, uh, which, you know, which then reminded me that maybe getting into an acting career is not the way that I would get into Bollywood. And in those days, you know, Pixar had just started. This was very early, uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, Pixar had just started creating these amazing short films using computer graphics. And they actually won a couple of uh, Emmys for one of them called Tin Toy, which if any of you have seen, it's really very basic shapes. You know, they just had basic spheres and cylinders and they kind of put it all together and they created amazing storytelling from it. And I looked at that and I said, maybe that's my path. And so that's really what inspired me to get into computer science. And that's what inspired me then to apply for IIT because I always had this vision that I was gonna do computer graphics and that would be my forte into Hollywood or Bollywood. So that's really what, why I, I worked hard to get into IIT. Um, and you asked me how was my days in IIT? Um, they were, um, I would just say amazing, I, I still, we collect them with a lot of fondness. Um, I, there were challenges as well, <clears throat> but I think that the, the fun and the camaraderie that I had and I got there, uh, it really trumps everything. You know, all my classmates, so I was the only girl in my class of 35 uh, in computer science. And so that had, of course, its own challenges, Luchan. And at the same time, like by the end of it, we were all really good friends, I think, that group of people are like my biggest confidants. And in fact, I got married to my husband who's also from IIT Bombay and was in my, in my same year. So, so I, I don't look at those challenges anymore. I look at all the wonderful gifts that I've gotten from IIT. Wow, so you were just one girl amongst 30, 35 boys. <laughs> <Yes>. Interesting. <laughs> I think the ratio improved 
during my time when i was there the ratio was 10 is to 1 10 male and one female uh, and i hope it will improve further we, we just want to reach equality uh, so yep. tell us about yourself uh, tell us post journey from iit like from iit to where you are today as uh, shalini we would love to know how you reached at such an influential position Yeah so you know like as I was describing like media was always a part of me and I knew I always wanted to be part of media in some way and you know as I mentioned clearly acting was not my thing um but it looked like technology was and so you know after I left IIT I joined Penn State I did my masters there in computer graphics and then I joined Pixar animation Uh, out of college and that's where we went ahead and made the two amazing computer graphics animated movies Toy Story and A Bug's Life those were actually the first ever fully computer animated movies that we had made and now if you look at it there's not a single movie that's animated that is done any other way they're all computer animated all of them relying on the technology that we built up at Pixar um so that was really an amazing time to see in production through the lens of technology um and then you know i shifted gears a little bit um and you know as the internet the internet wave started happening and you know i i looked at the media question as to how do we flip this around where how does technology really help media be democratized in ways that it never had been you know at pixar we had to wait to partner with disney before we could do anything but now people can anyone can be a storyteller right through the internet anyone can be a storyteller and that was really the vision that we had at youtube um so it was really the flip side so it was not production of content and media but it was really thinking through how do we help people distribute their content and distribution means of course reaching an audience and at youtube that went reaching a global audience and then of course you need to make money especially if this is going to be your full time job and so really helping our creators think through how do they make money um that was my role at youtube and in fact we we actually invented the creator economy even though we don't talk about it much but the creator economy is a buzzword now that everyone likes to use so shalini you mentioned about storytelling and i'm really curious to know like tiktok has been gaining a lot of popularity recently with its 15 second videos and youtube has also introduced youtube shorts do you think the attention span of users is going to reduce so much that the real essence of storytelling which usually takes much longer is gradually reducing or losing um you know i i think that yes there are tiktok videos that are 15 seconds and youtube has youtube shorts that we just launched um and doing very well um and at the same time you have these tv shows that are you know you see all the way till season 8 i think game of thrones went all the way to season 12 if i'm not mistaken and each episode is like an hour long and people have hung on to it um i don't know if you've seen the movie james bond which is in theaters now but that was i think two and a half hours at least if not three mm-hmm. and so i i think that storytelling always has these different mediums and depending on the story that medium can be different and now of course some of that medium is your phone some of that medium is theater some of the mediums are tv so different devices and the duration also depends really on what you're trying to tell because if i look at tiktok videos a lot of those stories are really very quick you know i i watch a lot of the cooking ones so just very quick how do you make something which is great because who wants to spend time too much time cooking so you want that to be happen really fast um on the other hand you know we're just watching the foundation on apple tv plus it's a it's an hour long every week and where whole family is glued to it so so i think it just depends on like what story you're trying to tell and some of them are longer they're higher production value some of them are shorter maybe less production value but the story is you know slightly different than what you're trying to get across yeah i had the same doubt but Uh, our audience has been here since uh, morning so it confirms that audience really wants something okay like- there you go there you go shali there was a tweet from you a few weeks back uh, where you've mentioned that virtual conference is like dvr tv you can record and fast forward the sections that make you sleep <laughs> and here we are at a virtual conference 
what is the best piece of advice you would like to give to our audience so that they do not do this to us <laughs> yes i had forgotten that tweet you really checked it out <laughs> um, and i said that because i had gone for a virtual conference and uh, some of the parts were like a little bit slow and so i had i had saved them and then i just watched them later at uh, you know youtube allows you to speed up videos and so i had sped them up at 1.5x <laughs> so just sharing what i had experienced um you know i think that the part of like see content needs to be interesting for people right in the end like what am i getting from this and is it worth my time or not and i think that's the magic of technology is that it allows you to interact with media on your terms on your time on what is important for you as opposed to on someone else's terms where if you were going in for example into a live conference of course you know i would say there's so many pluses on live conferences that i don't think virtual will ever take that away but the one thing that virtual offers is yes you can speed up things that are not of interest to you yes yeah. so my my biggest advice to people um who are speaking at conferences is to, uh, yeah make it interesting for people i hope we can we can do the justice to our talk yes. as well <laughs> so shalini you started your career from pixar and toy story is also one of my favorite movies and pixar has come a long way with very interesting movies like inside out soul coco what technological advancements do you see in these movies uh, from the time you worked there to now you know technology in the computer graphics and animation and i'm not in that space anymore but i'm getting back into it and i'll tell you why um it's kind of like a a 360 for me so in the ages when we when i was doing computer graphics you know even to do realistic hair like we you know we had like pretty realistic hair we had really realistic um grass in the bugs life sequences and uh, they took 24 hours to render so we would like set it all up and then set the compute overnight and they would happen in the morning and that's when we would come in we would see the whole shot and then we could make calls on it so but it took us a whole day like that was our render time now if you look at it you know if you look at virtual reality and the new of course meta is now the new term for everybody mm-hmm. um you know that facebook renamed to meta um and so you know if we think of meta and metaverses at this point what are they they're really 3d simulations of the world and they're happening in real time like no longer are you waiting a whole day for a rendering you can actually go into a scene of let's say the bugs life and you and your kids can be walking through it together you know niantic just released this game where um you can actually as you're walking you can create your own garden and you're walking through that garden and those are like the amazing advances that computers has made it's just i'm not waiting 24 hours for a render it's happening in real time and often times those renders are happening on these tiny computers that are our phones and so i think that's what's so amazing about um about technology how like fast it's advanced um and um i've actually started getting involved a lot in the metaverse as well Uh, from a google perspective so that's kind of the what i was talking about the 360 yeah we would talk about your journey at google as well but shalini you mentioned that earlier you were at content creation side and now you are at uh, distribution side at google uh, last decade has observed a tremendous increase in online streaming and there are multiple outlets and buyers for the content creators do you think more outlets the better or have we reached a peak now You know the way I think about it is um a distribution is global now so your audience is much larger than it ever used to be before like anytime you released anything or you came up with let's say a story that you published in a magazine your audience was a lot more local and now the audience is a lot more global so it's much bigger than what it used to be um and at the same time at least from a creator perspective there are so much creations that it's sometimes hard to stand above the noise and uh, you know i think those are some of the challenges by the way that even companies so this is not just for creators right if you think about what enterprise companies are also trying to do they have to stand out in these spaces which are very noisy and a lot of media, in, in fact even enterprise companies are buying media companies within them 
The reason is that everyone's trying to go direct to consumer. And that's really the big play, right? How do I go direct to my consumer so that they know what I stand for? I stand for maybe sustainability or I stand for, you know, ethical movements. And so how do I get that message to my audience? That is so critical for any company right now that they're actually seeing a lot more benefits by owning the media and being able to communicate through these direct-to-consumer mechanisms. Um, how, and, but like I said, the challenge is getting above the noise. And I think those are some of the, some of the things that we help our creators with is just being authentic. We also help a lot of the businesses as well, by the way, um, just in terms of how, do, how are you authentic? How are you reaching out to your consumers? How are you targeting? Those are all aspects that we look at. Um, and that's what every company and every individual has to be looking at as they're venturing into this space. Uh, a similar question to this, uh, Shalini, as you were mentioning that content has to be valuable and it has to be authentic. So given how we consume content now, is there an enough opportunity for smaller players or are we converging to a handful of very popular content due to recommendation engines, social media, etc.? You know, the amount of viral videos you see from random individuals across the world uh, are so many that, you know, I, I think that everyone has an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, however, I, I think it takes time and it takes patience. Virality, you know, a lot of people think like people just put up videos and they just get viral. Um, but there, it's that's really, whatever I've seen, that's very, very far and frequent that it just happens. Most of the time, a lot of thought has been placed into what are the trends? What, what is something that's trending that I can latch on to? What are some tags, like on Twitter, what are some tags that will really help me be focused on what audiences I want to reach? Um, and search engine optimization, of course, is another big one. But those are all, again, technical ways for people to really understand how they go directly to their consumer. And uh, it's not easy. I, I'm not saying it's easy. Um, but people have to spend time on it. So there, there's definitely now, I don't think anyone can just produce media and just hope that it gets successful there because you have to rise above the noise, like I said. So there's a lot of effort to be spent in how do I get this out? What are my channels? How do I make sure it's optimized correctly? How do I make sure it's tagged appropriately for Facebook and Twitter? And those are all aspects that, that really require a lot of thought. I'm shifting gears a little, uh, gears a little bit, Shalini. At IIT, we were told that IITians are not job seekers, rather they are job creators. And I'm sure there are many entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs uh, in our audience. So my question, there are two questions for our entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. Uh, first is how they can leverage media to get more visibility and to make their company or product successful. And second, um, second would be, um, I just, it's a skipped off my mind. So I'll come to that question later. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that, that's great. Yeah, I, you know, I think like what I was describing before, even big companies are buying media companies within them. And so I, I think that's a really important aspect that everyone has to think through is what are your channels? Like even as an enterprise company, any company these days, like what are your channels? How do people know about you? And what do they think of you? Like in these days, especially like if you're selling, for example, if you're, you have a company and you want to appeal to the millennials, you really had better get your act together in terms of thinking through sustainability, climate change. Those are all things that are so important for our younger generation. And so you've really got to think through, okay, what is my brand? And how do I, how do I let people know this is what I stand for and here's what I do? to make that happen, because that really gets the purchase cycles going, right? Like people thinking of you well, that yes, if I buy XYZ, then I wanna buy it from this particular business because I trust them. I know that they're doing the right things for the world, for the community, wh whatever it is that is your brand. Um, so I think all of those are very important for all um, uh, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, uh, you know, whoever's starting even, or who is CEOs of big companies. I think these are all aspects that we're all paying a lot of attention to. Yeah, and that question didn't come to my mind, I'm sorry, but oh. what opportunities do you see ahead in terms of innovation and disruption in media, media industry? Um, what disruptions do I see in media? I think, um, 
You know, I think the biggest challenge right now for media companies is what we're all reading in the press, which is more around ethics within media like and, and technology. I think that's actually the, the thing that we really need to focus on more than innovation is really thinking through whatever I'm doing, how is it impacting the world around me and how I'm making sure it's a positive, like it's a positive to have free speech and allow everyone to speak what they're able to wanting to communicate. But it's a negative if that free speech is leading to violence or it's leading to girls just having a negative opinion about themselves. And so how are we being more responsible and making sure that everything is additive and adding up and not taking us down into dystopian worlds? And so in my mind, that's really where media is, is it's at the crossroads um, and we really need to get a handle on it. Yeah, you're right. We really need uh, we really need more and more focus on governance and policy. Yep. Um, Shalini, uh, we are two women here and I must confess that I have a six weeks old and I'm really anxious going back to work. How did you overcome such anxiety and successfully manage your family and career? Uh, first of all, uh, congrats, Lochan, on your, I think you, your baby is like six weeks or eight weeks, you mentioned? Six weeks, six weeks now. Six weeks. Yeah, so congrats. Um, I feel like those times never come back. So you really got to enjoy it. Um, I, I will tell you that I took time off when I had my first one. Uh, we were in the production of A Bug's Life when I had Sonal, my older one. And uh, I remember taking a little bit of time off while we were making the production. And in fact, Sonal's name is in the credits of the movie, along with mine, uh, under this credit, what we call production babies. And so we had about 10 babies that were born, um, which was really fun and exciting because she was kind of part of my work. Um, but after the movie, I actually took a, a year and a half off to be with her. So... You know what I'd like to tell everyone, Lochan, is think of your life and your career as a car that's driving down, let's say, from California to New York. And sometimes it's going at 120 miles per hour. You're driving so fast and things are happening so quickly that you don't even know what's going on. And then sometimes you take this detour, like, let you know, if any of you have seen cars, you take a detour to Route 66 and you find this community and you find these people who are just chilling and they're just having a great time, but they're just together. Um, and so that's really how I think about careers is sometimes it's time for you to race and sometimes it's time for you to slow down and just enjoy it. And then, and we're all gonna work till we're 70, if not 75. So, you know, there's no rush. Really, we will all get there. So oh, that's my, I think, my yeah, thing. now I really need to slow down and take some time off. <laughs> I hope my colleagues are listening to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shalini, last question. I know we are running out of time. What are your two biggest successes so far? One personal and one professional. Um, well, my biggest successes on personal note is, of course, the kids. Like, how can I say anything different? Um, my kids are just amazing individuals, very empathetic, great leaders, great friends. My daughter is now at Genentech, which is a biotech company. She's very, very motivated by helping the world through bio, biology and technology. And my son is at USC. And uh, I'll tell you, like, you know, we went to visit him during family weekend and I was just reminded of IIT when I went there. I felt like, wow, like I want to be back in IIT because this is just the time. And he was like, think, he was telling me, mom, you know, I can finish my program in three years. And I said, why would you do that? Why would you finish in three years? Like take your time, enjoy college because it'll never come back. And this is really the best time of your life. And uh, so that's really what I'm really most proud of is my two kids. So that was personal uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> coming to professional. Yeah. And, uh, you know, professionally, of course, like having credits in movies that are blockbusters are always great. Um, I think, you know, the fact that, you know, I, I'm really proud of what we're doing right now on TV and the platform on TV. Um, we are focusing a lot, you know, what I just mentioned around media, we're really focusing a lot around the ethics and around exposing media in a way that's very diverse and talks a lot about exposing people so that we don't have stereotypes. Like a lot of media can be very stereotypical, mm -hmm. but we don't want to people only getting into those rabbit holes. We want them to be really thinking very expansively. And so that's what we're doing on our TV friends. I'm really proud of that team and my, my work there.
It was great talking to you, Shalini. Uh, there were some technical glitches, but still, our audience <laughs> would have gained a lot out of these conversations. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lachan. Thank you.